Hello and welcome back to CST2120. So in this lecture, I'm going to introduce you to HTML. So I'm going to start by explaining what it is, then talk about the sort of elements and attributes of HTML, and then briefly to run you through HTML documents and the HTML files. So what is it? Well, it's, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Hypertext means text with links, and markup language means it's describing the structure of a page, yeah? Sort of what, what, what the different parts of text are, whether they're headings, paragraphs, links, and all that kind of thing, yeah? HTML, to some extent, is used to control the location of images, nav get navigation bars, this kind of stuff. So if you put one thing before another in an HTML document, in some, you know, some ways in which the page can be rendered would be, you know, the HTML would control the structure, but a lot more of the structure stuff is done with CSS. So HTML is interpreted by, by web browsers such as Chrome or Firefox. Either Chrome or Firefox is perfectly fine for, on this module. I've expressed a little bit of reservation about using other browsers when you're developing front ends, but you know, obviously up to you, yeah? So the web browser reads the HTML or receives the HTML from the server, and then it interprets it and then displays the page, yeah? So this HTML can come from a local file, which is how we're doing web development in this module, or you can request HTML from a web server using the HTTP protocol. In that case, the HTML isn't being read from a file at the server side, at least not a lot of the time. It's being constructed from, you know, requests to databases and by running, uh, you know, scripts and this kind of stuff. So the HTTP protocol, which is going to come to you later, is a way in which uh, the client can request HTML uh, from the server. So it'll send a kind of GET request for a certain document or something like that. Uh, you know, if it wants GET HOME HTML, and, you can, and then the server might then reply with a bunch of HTML, and this HTML could correspond to the contents of this file, home HTML, or it could also be just generated, you know, using a bunch of code. HTML can be used for basic formatting, so we can use italics, bold, that kind of stuff in the text, but most of the formatting, like fonts, colors, you know, all that kind of stuff, is done using cascading style sheets, CSS, which is covered in another lecture or video. And modern websites, they're not static sort of documents that you just read. They're, they're typically interactive uh, things, right? You click on a button, something happens, uh, you know, different content loads and so on, yeah? And this is usually called dynamic HTML. So in that case, uh, the HTML is changing and the CSS is changing on the page as the user interacts with it and as you're running JavaScript on that page. This is going to be covered later in the course. Right, so HTML elements are the sort of basics of are the basis of HTML. Yeah, we're using tags and putting those tags around bits of text and also having other tags that just define, you know, put an image here, that kind of thing. Yeah. The angle brackets, so you know, the greater than, uh, less than symbols. Um, always use lowercase for HTML. You know, it'll probably work if you're using uppercase, but as a rule, just stick to lowercase. So HTML can exist as single tags. So for example, the BR tag, which means break, which just basically inserts a line break. Um, but other tags are opening and closing. So they're wrapping a piece of text and defining the formatting that is applied to that text. Yeah. So for example, this is a heading, this is a paragraph. Here we've got the opening tag and the closing tag or opening element, closing element, we're surrounding a piece of text. Yeah. So the you know very common HTML text formatting tags are for example H1, which is like heading one, heading two, H2. You can define paragraphs, you can put bits of text bold or italic, or superscript subscript, you can insert line breaks and horizontal lines. HTML is will basically collapse, um, well rather if you have white space in an HTML document, when the browser interprets it, it will ignore most of the white space in it, yeah? So here, for example, we've got a line break here, and that will be, because it's the line breaks and blocks and this kind of stuff are defined by HTML tags, it'll basically ignore any return marks you have within the HTML file, yeah? Or file, HTML document, yeah? So here, this is a heading, appears as this, this is a heading here without the line break, because it's just ignore the browser, when it interprets it, will just ignore that and put all the, all the white space into a sing, as a single white space without a break, yeah? And so here's another example. We got like like loads of sort of whites, you know, you know, been tapping the space bar a few times here. Again, that'll be completely ignored when the browser interprets it, and it'll basically collapse uh, this down to a single space. So don't ever try and have space insert space by 
putting returns in your HTML document or putting, you know, like hitting the space bar lots of times, it'll have no effect, yeah? So those are the basic tags or elements, and then these tags or elements can have attributes. So here um, we've given it an ID attribute. So you basically have the attribute name equals, and then in quotation marks, the value of the attribute. Yeah. So ID and class are very common ones. So I've given this thing an ID my paragraph or class my paragraph. Yeah? Any HTML tag can be given an ID attribute. IDs are very useful for creating links in a page, styling with CSS, or manipulating HTML by JavaScript. The uh, ID attributes are case sensitive for JavaScript, not for CSS. So here, for example, um, we've got an ID attribute applied to this paragraph. Yeah? The crucial thing about IDs is they have to be unique on a page. Yeah? You should never have the same ID given to two HTML elements on the same page. Different pages is fine, but the ID, as you expect with an ID, is unique. So you should be able to pick out a single element using the ID attribute. Class attributes can be applied to multiple HTML elements on the same page. Again, often used for applying styles or selecting modifying HTML with JavaScript. They treat them as case sensitive, always treat everything as case sensitive and just use lowercase with the HTML tags. Um, and you can have multiple HTML elements with the same class attribute, yeah? So for example, we might want to style some paragraphs in a different way. In this case, we could give them all the same class attribute. Single or double quotation marks are fine in HTML and also in JavaScript, um, but watch out for quotation marks pasted in from Word or PowerPoint, yeah? Let's try and find a quotation mark. So you see here, these are kind of like smart quotes inserted by PowerPoint, um, and they kind of look a bit different, yeah, from ordinary, like straight two parallel, like two vertical lines or single vertical line. So if I copied this in from my PowerPoint slide and pasted it into um, an HTML document, um, it would probably generate an error somewhere, yeah? So, the quotation marks you type on your keyboard are fine, the kind of ones you find in a text editor, but the ones that are from PowerPoint or Word are more fancy ones, and yeah, you can't just paste them in uh, and expect them to work. Comments are, you know, this sort of complicated quotation mark double dash thing. Easier when you're using an IDE like Visual Studio Code, which we'll come to later, just use control slash and it'll put the comments in for you, you don't need to bother typing them, yeah? Commonly code extensively and lay it out, lay it out tid tidily because there's 10 marks for code quality in the coursework assignments on this module. Many elements have opening and closing tags. Um, so I've sort of talked about some of these already, like paragraph. Other elements have a single tag. Yeah? If I want to put an image in with the IMG tag, I don't need a closing tag after that. Yeah, I just put IMG by itself and input the same. You just need to learn the rules that are associated with these different <laughs> Tag. So if you know it's a paragraph or a P tag, then you know you have to put a closing tag or it'll be an error in the document. If you know that, you know, area or image IMG doesn't have a closing tag, then don't put the closing tag. Yeah, you just got to follow the rules to avoid HTML errors, yeah? But recently, well, recently in the last few years, they introduced the semantic markup. It's basically sort of organizing the content, you know, with, with semantic or things that have, with tags that have specific meanings, yeah? So you might use nav to organize the navigation section or address to organize an address section. In theory, search engines might use this, but these days search, search engines are so smart, I very much doubt they, they need you to specifically use the address tag for it to recognize that it's an address, yeah? But it's probably not bad practice to use these, some of these semantic tags, you know, in the appropriate places. Like any programming language or markup language, HTMLs have several revisions. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I'm currently on HTML5. And this is the version I'm going to cover here, yeah? So when I started web development, there was some big issues with different browsers supporting different features of HTML and CSS. It was kind of a nightmare. Early versions of Internet Explorer, you know, were, were just rubbish, basically. And they would render the page very differently from other browsers like Firefox. And so it was kind of sometimes a bit tricky to know what the page is going to look like on different browsers. So you sometimes had to kind of do uh, what's called browser sniffing. You had to figure out what browser you were you're on and then hack your HTML to match the quirks of the particular browser. Yeah, This is less of an issue now. I'm not going to cover it in the course. Just use the latest version of Chrome or Firefox. I'm not expecting the, you know, multiple browser tests, you know, as part of your coursework. Yeah. And if you want to sort of minimize these issues and you, best thing to do is just use a third-party library and framework like Bootstrap or jQuery, which are kind of set up to be able to handle lots of different browsers. So HTML documents have a sort of very tightly defined structure, right? So we talked about individual tags. Now I'm talking about how the entire document needs to be arranged, yeah? Now, 
the good news about this is you never need to remember this. This is kind of what's called like boilerplate, yeah? It's a sort of set of HTML that's in every single document. And if you're using a modern IDE like VS Code, you can just generate this structure immediately without having to remember, ooh, I forgot the, you know, what, what's the lang tag and all this, lang attribute and all this kind of stuff, yeah? So you need to understand it, make sure your HTML documents are conform to this template, but you don't need to remember it as long as you just generate it with VS Code, yeah? So at the start of it, we've got this kind of doc type thing, so it's an HTML document. Then we've got the opening and closing tags that wrap the entire document, yeah? The, and within that, they have this attribute, the language of the page that the page is on. Obviously, I guess it could be multiple pages. And then we've got two sections, yeah? We've got the kind of head section, which has kind of meta information about the page, like the character set, the title, this kind of stuff. Sometimes you have uh, keywords for searches and this kind of stuff. And then the bottom you have the kind of matching body tags which has all the content that you actually see in the front of the page. Yeah? So again, we've got opening, closing head tags, wrapping the content, the sort of meta information about the page. And these meta tags are things like the character set, how you map numbers to characters. And then the viewport, like how to initially display the, the sort of page, like the width and how that relates to the device width and this kind of stuff. Yeah? Then we also have the title of the page. This doesn't appear in the, in the body of the, page, of the website, but it appears like on the tabs of the browser. So for the title, so you can see here, we've got the title of the page here. That will actually appear here, yeah? And you can put an icon in there as well, yeah? Then we have the body, which contains all of the stuff you actually see in the main website. Um, so you put the kind of contents there. I've just put a placeholder there. But for example, we could have like headers, paragraphs, all this kind of stuff. And that's what we'll actually see on the website. So avoid, follow the rules and avoid errors, basically, yeah? So, you know, if you if a, if, it, if an HTML element has has to have a closing tag, then you need to put that tag in, yeah? As you practice using HTML, you'll, you know, get to grips with, you know, how these rules work and start to follow them automatically. I strongly recommend using IDE, such as VS Code, which I'm going to cover in another lecture, um, which is going to highlight the errors for you, yeah? So VS Code understands HTML extremely well, and so if you're missing closing tags, then it's going to start highlighting those problems for you, and then you can try, then you can fix them, yeah? Um, if you've got loads and loads of errors, at some point you just it won't be able to help you anymore because it's just too confused about how the document should be structured. Yeah, that's why you need to have some knowledge yourself as you're you know writing your HTML. Yeah, can't rely entirely on AI or the IDE. Um, if you want to check your HTML, there, there are what are called validation services. So you basically upload it or paste it into a, a box, and then it'll check and identify any errors for you. Not a bad idea to do that before submission because every year students learn lose some you know a few marks here or there because they've got you know they've got two head tag opening head tags or you know don't close the HTML ele element and all this kind of stuff. So commercial websites, the HTML is generated by the server and sent to the client. Yeah, so when you know the Google home page, right? It's it's generated by some massive server farm somewhere. It's not like a special file you know that, that exists somewhere in the Google cloud. Yeah. Um, so once you get to a certain scale, you're, you're using code to stitch together the HTML and then you're sending that HTML back to the client in response to an HTTP request, yeah? So we're not dealing, when we're dealing with big scale websites, no HTML files, you know, for the most part, yeah? Smaller websites you can build by building separate files for each page. And just as a note, even if you're using, even if your web company is using code to build the HTTP, HTML that's being sent back to the client, you'll probably develop it initially using an HTML file, yeah? You know, make sure it works and test it and that kind of stuff, yeah? So with smaller websites, often we just have separate files for each page. You might have home HTML, game HTML, registration HTML, and so on and so forth. We always use the extension .html. File name should be lowercase, and don't put spaces in. You'll be all, you, these days it'll be okay, but as a general rule, it's better not to have spaces. Otherwise you'll see in the browser, they're kind of using percent 20 escape characters and all this kind of stuff. Just safer and easier, lowercase, no spaces, use underscore or dashes if you need to, yeah. So we're building a website and your website has to sort of address the problem, like, you know, which page should be loaded when the user requests just, a, you know, when it goes to a domain. So if I'm in a browser, I go to google.co.uk, I'm not specifying which HTML file I should, you know, I, I'm, I want, right? How does the server know which HTML file to read and send back to the client, yeah? So when you're building a website with files, by convention, the first page the server loads is always called index.html, yeah? 
So if so if I uploaded my website to, you know, well not Google probably, but davidgammers.eu is my website, right? Um, as it happens, my my homepage is called index.php because it's a PHP based website. But if it was an HTML based website, I'd call I'd call one of those pages index.html, and that would be the first page that'd be loaded, be sent from the server. Yeah. Well, if you if this if the page wasn't specified, this is what would be sent back to the client. Yeah. So take home message, call the home page of your website index.html. Always do that and make sure that uh, because that will be the first page that'll be loaded by the server. Yeah. Now, code for your website should be in a single folder. So we'll come to this when we talk about the development environment. But you should basically create a single folder um, to hold all of your HTML files, as well as images, CSS files, and JavaScript files. Yeah. For this for this coursework, you're only going to have you know maybe five. Sorry, for the first coursework, you're only going to have five HTML files. Let's say so. You, so don't put those in folders because it can make all the paths and stuff more difficult with the navigation than that. Yeah. But you should definitely use subfolders to hold your images, your CSS files, and your JavaScript files. Yeah, and I see this time and time again. Yeah, don't don't uh, start with the organized files at the beginning. Put you know start being organized at the very beginning. Do not try and reorganize everything five minutes before the deadline, um, and then and then submit your websites. Yeah, people often break their websites because they're trying to get the marks of code organization by rearranging them. But obviously, if you rearrange all the files. Then all the links will all break, and your website will break, and you're going to lose marks for that. Yeah, so organize, be organized as you go, and test your website properly every time you make a change to the file structure. Yeah. So there are marks of file organization, but don't try and get those marks at the expense of ruining your website, because then you probably lose more marks. Yeah. So just to wrap up. HTML's markup language indicates which part of the document are headers, paragraphs, uh, images, etc. Does support basic formatting, but CSS is really what's used for the main formatting of a website. Yeah, elements have these angle brackets around them, like break, you know, opening, you know, wrapping the element, and we can have attributes in there like class ID and other things. Yeah, sometimes you've got matching, opening, closing pairs like H opening HTML, closing HTML tag. Others just exist by themselves. We want to put an image in. It's just saying because the image is defined in the attribute, um, we can just have like the tag by itself. We don't need a closing tag. You have to follow the correct structure, otherwise you generate errors and lose marks. Um, and also, your website will kind of break in weird ways that you don't understand. Your JavaScript probably won't function properly. Everything will kind of start to go wrong if you've got a really messed up HTML. Yeah. So use your ID to help you with that. Just learn the rules so you automatically apply them anyway. Um, when it comes and at the I sort of introduced this uh, sort of boilerplate, the sort of structure um, of an HTML page. You, you need to understand that, but don't remember to bother remembering the details because the ID will automatically generate for you. The home page of your website, the first page that loads, should always be called index.html. And take care with file organization. Don't rearrange your files at the last minute without checking your website still works because otherwise you just lose a lot of marks. Okay, and that's it.